there, Thrill Seekers. And that was a little bit of a song I just put up on the internet. It's called In the Past. It's originally a song by the Chocolate Watch Band. I actually think their manager wrote the song and not one of the members of the band, which is interesting to me because I'm a nerd. And it was recorded as part of this project I set for myself years ago, like the late 90s, early 2000s, to record orchestrated, fake orchestrated, because I didn't have money to hire a real orchestra, but fake orchestrated versions of songs that nobody would ever put an orchestra on. Uh, and and I thought this uh, Chocolate Watch Band, Chocolate Watch Band being kind of a garage band from the 60s, nobody would ever think to do a fully orchestrated version of one of their songs. And this is probably, that was probably the, the one that came out the best. So I've been corresponding over the emails with a friend of mine who's having a difficult situation in life, like really difficult, and I don't want to give uh, a full account of his difficulties. Look, my hair is having difficulties today. It's crazy. Anyway, I don't want to give a full account of this guy's difficulties because I don't want to get into his personal life or anything. But what I wrote to him is advice I've given to myself a bunch of times, and it might be useful to some of you folks out there if you're having a difficult situation. So I thought I would read to you what I wrote to my friend and then talk about it a little bit. I've always thought that who we are and the circumstances in which we find ourselves are not at odds. They're two aspects of the same thing. It's not easy to accept that because we're taught to believe that things could be different from how they are. But that's not true. Things can change from how they are. Things can improve. That's true. But the circumstances in this moment are exactly what they are in this moment. Sometimes it's important to see the situation as it is without objecting to it. That doesn't mean you have to like it or even be okay with it. You can hate it. But seeing it as real, I think, is the only way to make it work. It's when you see the reality of yourself and your situation without blinders and without imagining it it ought to be different that you can see how to change it. For me, that means noticing how I wanted this situation, which is not easy. But I've noticed that I cannot change a bad situation until I can admit that at some level, this bad situation is precisely what I wanted. And I didn't use the word bad when I wrote to him, but I'm trying not to work blue, you know, use... uh, naughty words on this on this uh, video channel, but I used a much stronger word and you can just imagine what that is. Because his situation is pretty much one that calls for using a stronger word than bad. When I've been able to do that, which as I've said is not easy, then the way out will often become very clear. Sometimes I don't like the way out any more than I like the situation but at least I know what it is. Then I have to ask myself, do I want to linger in this situation or do I want to take the way out? And sometimes the answer isn't uh, all that clear. I didn't write this to my friend. I'm just thinking this as I, as I read this out loud. Sometimes I'm like, maybe I want to linger in this situation. Not that that's a good thing, but sometimes you one has to admit to one. Sometimes I, let's say it this way. Sometimes I have to admit to myself that, yeah, I do want to linger in this situation. At which point I have to ask, oh, is that the right thing to do? Should I keep lingering in this situation or should I take up this way out that I've seen, which is often a difficult thing to do. It's often the way out that presents itself isn't like a beautiful open golden door. It's often like a big road up some thorny steps with monsters on the side or something. It's not always just like, hey... Anyway, it's happened where it's taken months or even years for me to finally accept what I need to do. But the sooner I accept what needs to be done, the better. This isn't a matter of thought, though. Thinking is useful, but seeing the way out of a situation I don't like doesn't come to me as a thought. It's not like I go, well, maybe if I do this, and then I do that, and I do the other thing, and this person responds this way, and uh, what will I do if they respond the other way? And uh, I try to think of it and calculate it. It's not like that. It's like, bing, that's the way out. 
that's the door. It might not be the beautiful, golden, wonderful door that I hope to have, but there's the door. And if I want to get out of this situation, I got to go to the door. The other thing is recognizing that I've already seen the way out. That's often hard too. I don't want to admit to myself that I've been staring the way out in the face for ages without doing anything about it. Another weird thing is that upon accepting the truth of what I've already known, the means to do it will appear spontaneously. They will often be things and or people who I've been seeing and interacting with all along. Often the solution is something that my own thoughts have been telling me is impossible or even crazy. Now there are always a million ways things could be. You can always look at a situation and think, well, I could be in Bermuda right now, or I could have uh, married somebody different, or I could have, uh, I don't know what, you know, it, it, fill in your own blanks. There's always, always a million different ways things could be, and the world is kind of set up to tell you, oh yeah, things could be different. You could be, uh, you know, Instagram and things are showing you. Your friend is uh, is uh, d d driving a Porsche down the Champs Elysees with balloons, and you're going, I should be driving a Porsche down the Champs Elysees with balloons. Champs de Champs Elysees. Anyway, that big that big street in Paris. But what you don't see in that Instagram picture is what got your friend into the. Porsche on the Champs Elysees, Champs, whatever that big street in Paris, whatever got your person on on that Porsche with the big street in Paris with all those balloons, it probably wasn't like Bing. Here's a bunch of balloons and a Porsche and a, and a plane ticket to Paris. They they worked for that. So you know that that's the way it is. Um, I've never encountered a situation that I haven't put myself into and that I lack the means of changing. Now that's the thing, to me. Now this is this is what works for me, and I, I every time I say it, I get somebody going, "Well, what about the starving Indian children?" But I go, "Look, every time I look at a situation that I'm in that's bad, I can see that I wanted that situation. Wanted is a is the word that everybody gets upset about, and that's where they go, "What about the crippled children in Malaysia or some you know whatever they they they're gonna throw in." And then I go, I don't know about the crippled children in Malaysia. You know, maybe maybe their situation is different, but I don't know what their situation is. All I know is that when I look at my own situations, honestly, no matter how bad they are, I go, okay, there is some level, some place at which I wanted this situation. The situation that I'm now facing and going, oh, this is the crappiest situation I've ever been in and I hate it and I, you know, whatever I feel like. But there was some level at which I wanted it. And then once I accept that I wanted this situation, then the way, the means to get out of the situation is often spontaneously apparent. And... I know that accepting this sort of thing is, is requires a kind of leap of faith, because we're taught, we're we're all taught that that's not the wor way the world works, and and we're all taught that that's magical thinking or whatever you know whatever you've heard you know I, I know what I've heard maybe you've heard some a different version of it, and you're and you're taught that like that and I know that at some level, we all kind of want to be the victim. That's that's the other thing. It's something that's being pushed really hard in American society right now. I don't know if you're, you know, if you're not watching this in the US, maybe it's not being pushed as hard in your country. But for Americans right now, and I don't know why it is, but our collective something, I don't know what it, our collective something uh, that I can't identify, is really, really pushing this idea that you should see yourself as a victim. That all of us should see ourselves as victims of this or that, and and it's those guys. It, you know, it's often the white men, the patriarchy, are often uh, seen as the as the culprit. But sometimes the woke people are seen as the culprit, or you know, they, or or whatever the government or the UFOs are seen as the you know, whoever is the culprit, whoever's responsible for the situation. 
situation and you're just the victim. That's what we're told to believe. And, and, and there's, there's forces out there who really want us to believe that, who really want us to see ourselves as, as innocent victims of evil, evil powers. I don't think that's true. I, if I'm honest with myself, I always see that I am not the victim. Always, every time. And you out there, the viewer, might say, well, that's because you're special or that's because you're a member of the white privilege or whatever. You know, that's the, the, you know, the, the, the answer that always comes out. But I don't think so. I don't think I'm exceptional. I don't think that there's something special about me that makes that makes for that. I, there there are certain circumstances that I lived with and, and all of that, but you know it's not that. It's that it's just a matter of seeing like this situation is a situation that at some level, at some maybe secret, unknown level. Deep, buried deep in the subconscious and inaccessible and hard to admit to and so forth and so on. At some level, I wanted this crappy situation. And noticing that I wanted that crappy situation and also noticing the non-crappiness of even the most crappy situation. Of noticing, oh, there are some advantages to this situation, no matter what it is. There is something about this situation that is useful and that there is something about this situation which might even give me the key to how to change it. But it, it, it always starts with acceptance, with this kind of radical acceptance that things can't be different from how they are now. Now, I don't now th this is a ling linguistic trick here. Because if I say things can't be different, people are liable to read that as like, th things can never change. That's not what that means. That means that the situation that I'm in right now cannot be anything other than what it is. It is what it is, as, as the kids say. This is what it is. Now, what I do about this situation, there are infinite ways to go with what I do about the situation. And when I say the door opens or the way out becomes apparent, it doesn't mean that I'm instantly going, boom, go through the door and bing, everything is beautiful. It means the step-by-step -step way, the way that, that will often take a while to come into fruition, that will often involve a certain amount of risk taking, of, of, of going, okay, I'm going to trust this intu intuition and I'm going to start moving in that direction and the first steps are not always maybe not even maybe not ever going to be the miracle but the way of getting out of the situation is to accept the situation is something i wanted and this is something you can only point at yourself, by the way. That's why I'm giving it in the form of this, this video. Uh, I, I, it, you can't just look at somebody in a bad situation and go, you wanted this situation, because the, the, the only thing they'll do is get violent and angry, you know? So don't do that. This is something to apply to yourself, to go, okay, there's some, there's some level at which I wanted this situation. There's some level at which this situation is the situation for me, and this situation is me. The circumstances are not other than me. It's like in a dream. You, you, when you reflect back on a dream, you understand that the dream is within you, and the dream circumstances that you found yourself in were just you. Uh, it's a bit like that, only applying it to this, going, okay, this is also a situation that is me, that this surrounding isn't at odds with me, this surrounding isn't against me, this surrounding isn't something arbitrary, this situation is not something that was put on me by the evil woke people or the evil white patriarchy or whatever the hell, you know, I'm just picking out the versions that Americans love these days, but it's not them, it's not them, it's me, and once I see it's me, I can also see that 
me has the means to make a difference in this situation, no matter what that difference is, and, and, and that that difference might be hard to make. Okay, that's my positive message, and I hope it didn't sound too new agey or crazy. If you want to uh, contribute to me making more messages like this, you can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen below, which is Hardcore Zen dot info slash donate that is hardcore zen dot info slash donate there you will find links to my paypal and my patreon accounts those are my main ways of making a living but as always you don't got to support me if you don't want to support me also if you want to support me in a minor but different way come to the events that i'm doing in europe starting in um, oh god like a week or so i'm gonna leave you can see the events on your screen right now i'm going to england to finland to germany and then later on to Bozeman, Montana, you can find uh, clickable links to the people to talk about, to talk to. If you want to go to those events, you can find them here at hardcorezen.info slash events. And you find all the clickable links. Uh, don't be afraid to ask, uh, even if they tell you it's full up. They, uh, I've, I've seen that they almost always uh, will go, oh, okay, we can take one more person. So, we will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye, Zoles. Okay, the whole time I've been making this video, these two lazy dogs have been laying here watching me make this video. One, as you can see, Ziggy's on the yoga mat. Fico's on the rug. Fico is my sister-in-law's dog, and we're watching him while she's away. Uh, so, um, yeah. So now you get to see what I was looking at when I was making the video. Oh, look, they're being friendly. Oh, bye, Michael. Anyway, see you later, Ziggy.